Okay, we are moving on to the final part of the drafting phase. It's very exciting because we will get to move on to the designing part, which will be bringing out so many things in all of us, whether we are designers or beginners or even if we don't have any experience in design, I think this upcoming chapter really will bring um, the inner creativity in us. It will unleash our creativity, if I may. <laughs> um, so, we're going to talk about the layers panel. And one thing to let you guys know how to navigate through the different panels is through this bar over here. So with the tools panel, you get to toggle around the layers and the libraries with the assets and all of that. So it is all very easy access and very direct as usual. So I'm going to go ahead uh, and open up the layers panel here so that I can explain to you guys what happens in the layer panel exactly. As you can see here, these are all different artboards. So whenever you create a new artboard, it forms a brand new layer for its own. So I'm going to, for example, select this artboard here, which uh, shows me that this is its entire layer. And what's interesting about layers, if you guys ha don't have any experience with um, Adobe uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, or any kind of design program, is that it gives you a lot of flexibility. And one really cool thing about Adobe XD layers format is that it's smart. It uh, kind of detects what you are aiming to open and look at just by clicking on it. Sometimes uh, in uh, programs such as Photoshop, there is the option where we have to click on the layer in order to be able to move it around. Uh, in this case here, we don't really need to do that. We can just press on anything we want and it will directly go to what they think we are trying to select. And one really cool thing about uh, Adobe XD is as soon as you select layers, they kind of start to uh, isolate layer by layer so that you're not confused and overwhelmed with the amount of layers like here. So basically when you are forming a full on application or website, you will have so many artboards that it would be very overwhelming for you to like open one and have it drop down to the smaller um, sub layers. So what Adobe X needed in one of their updates is that as soon as I click on something, they kind of open a new layers tab to show me the inner layers within that bigger layer. Uh, again, I'm very quickly going to press on this just to indicate what each icon uh, represents. And here we have, for example, the artboards icon, which is usually kind of like a paper with um, a folded edge. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and click on this group here. So this is a whole group with text, with photos and all of that. And the person named this group Player Compare. When something that it has many different features like photos, um, texts, uh, shapes, and so on and so forth, this is its grouping icon. So this is the group of this entire layer. And when I double click on it again, this sub layer opens on its own now. You see it opened here just because um, we are in the sub layer and it's easier for us to look within a group than to look within a big artboard with a lot of layers. So um, I'm going to go ahead and open this artboard here. Uh, you can either click, double click on the layer itself or you can just um, click on this uh, any layer that you would want to open. And then uh, I can either double click on anything that I want to select specifically within the layer or I can choose to open it and look through which layer I wanted to choose initially. So for um, organization purposes, 
We usually name these unless it's something like a text that says 23. But let's say, for example, here we have the image of the man. It could be image one. It could be the man. Uh, left image, stuff like that. So that the other image over here could also be distinguished as image two. As you can see here, there are two layers, which might be confusing. I'm not sure why, because this is a template. But um, regardless, uh, naming things to understand what they are is great. For example, here, this person named it rectangle 528. Um, personally, when I look through the layers and I want to track something, I would rather name it as um information box r for right and then um from there i would very easily understand that i'm selecting information box r rather than um trying to do something to make sure that i am pressing on the right layer uh, just to give you a quick summary on how layers look like the uh, line layer, when you form lines, is the same icon, same thing with the pen, um, the text as well. And here's the image uh, layer, and this happens when you use a couple of things on an image to edit it, and we will get into that very soon, don't worry about it. But uh, obviously this image is masked, it's cropped, there are rectangles, and... There are a lot of things done to it, but this is what an image, an edited image would look like. We have the rectangle, which is also the rectangle, uh, another line, text. So they're all almost the same. And as you can see, um, the stuff that have groups within are usually a little bit darker colored than the ones that don't have any groups. So this is just a text box. It doesn't have any group to it. Um, so there isn't really much to click here, so it's gray. But here we can see a darker gray because it's a grouped or edited image. And we can see here, we can remove the edits. Um, it's probably some sort of drop shadow or anything subtle. And that's about it. Uh, in case you guys are not familiar at all with the usage of layers i'm gonna uh, go ahead and talk a little more about what we can do with them and um how we can organize them so let's say i have this image here that i want uh, to go under this box and i'm gonna go ahead and trace where this box is uh, and write um information box l for left so now I know that this is the box that I want um, my photo to go under. So what I'm going to do is, because these two are associated with the photo, I'm going to uh, press on the layers. So I press on the first one, and then I press on Shift on my keyboard. I keep holding it, and I select everything else that I want to move with the photo. So now they are moving together, but they are still not grouped. They are just moving together because I selected them all together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag this under the information box left. Obviously, we have this in the way as well, so I'm going to just tra drag it down as well. And now we can see that the information box is on top of the photo. I can resize it to show you guys. And um, it clearly shows that uh, it is uh, layered in a specific way. So this is layers are quite literal with their name So as we are putting something above one another, so because I have this text uh, on top of the image layer It's gonna appear in front of it But if I drag it under the image layer, it's gonna go under the image which will not allow me to see it so when you want to add something in front of another thing, for example, this text in front of the box is going to be above the box, while other text, um, for example, here won't really matter. So you can uh, you can feel free to place uh, such layers wherever you want. 
Um, for example, here we can see that these are on top of the numbers and also they're quite misplaced. It could be like an exporting problem, but we can see um, the main uh, idea about this feature. And one of the most important things, in my opinion at least, in order to maintain a successful and neat um, uh, kind of work, especially when you show it to clients, when you um, showing it to anyone who is interested, is to be as uh, neat as possible with it. So here this person has named every art board, which is great. Um, it shows what each layer is made to be. So for example, I can go like, oh, I want to find the colors of this application. And I will see the colors artboard and I'm going to double click on it and it will lead me to the colors. That is much easier than having to zoom out and scroll around, try to find color and then go to color. Uh, similarly, whenever I would create an artboard, uh, we would name it something like a homepage or loading page and so on and so forth. And with that, um, whenever I am away from this layer and I want to go back to it to fix something, I can very easily just look for home page and double click on it. I can also rename it by double clicking here and typing in anything like loading page. Or what I can do is I can double click here and rename it whatever I want. For example, notifications page. This makes it very easy for the user to navigate through without having to zoom out or zoom in or scroll too much, especially with big projects like this one. You would need as much guidance as possible so that you can ensure that you are getting uh, the best result that you can achieve from it. And what is uh, great about all of this uh, work, uh, what layers exactly do is uh, it makes everything very clear to you. Let's say you close the project after working on it and you haven't opened it in a week. When you open it back again, you might find yourself lost with uh, artboard 1, artboard 2, artboard 3, artboard 4, and you don't know which one is which. Or you would open one and all what you can see is group one, group two, group three, and you don't know where is the group that you're looking for. Obviously, you can go with the hassle of like double clicking until you find the layer that you want, but um, it isn't as efficient as looking through the layers and going like, okay, I wanted the drawer. Okay, I wanted to edit this la layer here and finding it straight away. Because sometimes you can be so far away from this layer that you would have to double click so many times. So let's say I want to get to player's history here. I will have to first uh, click on the artboard and then double click on the text and then double click again on the text. And sometimes it could be deeper, such as let's say uh, a group like this one, where you would have to first select the artboard and then double click on the text and this is a group so you double click again and then now you're selecting the text and then you double click again and now you can edit. This is too much of a hassle and you don't want to uh, waste time just double clicking and trying to select the right file. You can just name them, make sure that they're as um, organized as possible and from there you're able to achieve very efficient and quick ways of uh, working on your project as professionally as possible. Now, uh, we have uh, officially looked through everything that we would need in order to draft a project. And now we're going to be moving on to the design aspects of the project. And the design aspects are very much uh, exciting for me personally and hopefully for you guys as well because in the designing process we're able to understand how to be successful with our designs. We now learned how to design uh, or um, more like how to use the tools to design but we still don't know 
what is the right way to approach such designs or how I can do it? How do I make icons or how do I uh, make sure that they all look well? How do I uh, choose the colors for my website and so on and so forth? And what we're going to do in the design phase is uh, just talk about all of these things in order to ensure when we are prototyping and creating some sort of content that you guys are ready to create something on your own too. So this is what we're going to be going uh, moving on with and hopefully you guys are as excited as me to gain a greater experience with design and a bigger understanding on how to handle um, such aspects of UX and UI because it isn't only about understanding users and putting boxes in front of each other but it is also very crucial for us uh, to be able to understand what is visually acceptable and what isn't and this is what I would want to teach you guys in the next chapter which is the design one so without further ado let's move on to the design chapter now we are about to start one of the most crucial parts in UX and UI design. This part or this chapter specifically is going to be completely dedicated to design. Uh, we want to cover together what is important and what to consider when designing uh, anything from an app to a website and it is very important for us to understand so many design elements in order to like I've said before create something that is successful and very memorable for people. We can look around at any kind of website or application that is very well known and we can see that in almost all of them you can see some consistencies in color and designs and um, icons, symbols, and so on and so forth. In this chapter specifically, we're going to be talking about how to approach the icons and the symbols in a very professional way in order to make our application be as clean, as uh, consistent as possible. So, I'm going to first start talking about icons and symbols and why they are important to have in applications. When using buttons, for example, we are very likely to see text, but if we find any website that is only text-based, uh, it's not going to be very fun for us or interesting for us because if we only see text in our applications or websites, uh, we are likely to feel bored and sometimes maybe even lost. That's why you would find an application such as Instagram, Facebook, they would depend on merely icons. Icons are eye-catching, it keeps our brain active because we are able to understand uh, what represents what. So for example, the home icon would show us the news or home feed for our application or how the notifications is usually a bell. It is much better than just having a button that says home, notifications, and so on and so forth. And not only will it make us interested in what we're using, but it will also uh, make it very clear and it will give us more space to create. Let's say, for example, I have the home button and the notifications button. You can notice that the word home has four letters, while notifications has much more letters than home. Uh, the placement of the words will be difficult to balance between each one. So the best thing that applications would approach is to use icons instead of maybe writing the text. Or maybe sometimes they would write the text underneath the icons and we wouldn't really notice the different sizes, the different amounts of texts, because the icons and the symbols are what uh, stands out in the design itself. One of the most important things when we are considering the creation of icons and so on is the fact that we want it to be in a uniform uh, visual language. And that means that if we are going to use one type of icons, then we should stick to using it. Uh, and other icons, we would apply it. So let's say, for example, 
uh, we use rounded icons, meaning uh, I use an icon without any sharp edges. I should keep using such type of icons to make sure that uh, everything aligns and all the symbols look like each other, just so that you can complete the identity of the application or program. Similarly, um, we would look at so many different elements in our icons and symbols, such as um, how it is designed. So sometimes we, they would be line based where you'd only use lines to draw it. And sometimes it could be uh, fill based where we fill the inside and it wouldn't just be strokes, it would be colored in. Uh, we're going to look more into colors and the usage of those in the icons. But first, I would love to start with how to approach the icons very ideally. Now, uh, as a beginner who is uh, listening to this course, or maybe even someone who is more advanced with more experience, uh, I want to tell you guys that it is more than okay for us to approach such designs with references, meaning that we don't completely design it on our own, but we also use uh, any sort of um, photo or anything that could reference, that we could reference in order to uh, create our icons. And I'm going to show you this uh, very soon, but I'm just speaking very generally. You don't need to be completely original. Because keep in mind, if you guys remember in the introduction chapter, I talked to you about how things need to be familiar between users. And sometimes doing something different for your home feed icon could confuse the user. That's why you find so many applications using almost the same icon, but they would design it slightly differently. And we're going to look into that very soon. But do not feel ashamed if you need to have a reference while you're designing, or even if you design the same exact thing that you see. But I do encourage you guys to always try to be innovative and creative when it comes to designing something for yourself. Because when you're designing, you want to stand out from other people and you don't want it to look the same throughout other applications. Otherwise, it won't be as unique as you think. Now, we're going to start by looking for uh, references. And for this one, I'm thinking that we could create something like uh, a health tracking icon. So I'm going to go on to Google here and I'm going to write something like um, heartbeat uh, icon. And as we can see here, we have so many different types of icons. And as we are looking, we are going to choose what kind of visual we want to aim to do. So for example, here, this one has rounded edges, as you can see here, except for some that are sharp. Personally, I like to keep it consistent. So if I have a sharp edge, I would love to keep everything sharp and not mix rounded with sharp. So I'm going to keep looking and I'm thinking of doing something with sharp edges just so that we could keep it uh, easy and simple. So I'm just going to look around and see which one I prefer the most. Uh, if you would guys like to apply the practice that I will be giving you later on, you can start working with me right now or you can start applying it later. As you can see here, this one's almost sharp, but we still have a bit of rounded edges. And honestly, I would prefer something outlined instead of colored inside. So I'm trying to find an outlined one that is quite sharp, maybe. And as I'm looking through, I'm not seeing much. So maybe I will choose one that is rounded and then sharpen it. So maybe this one. I know that this one has rounded ends, but I will keep in mind that I want them all to be sharp, like this one. So I'm just going to save the image, take it to my desktop, and write heartbeat icon. This is one. Let's go with maybe steps, steps icon. Now here you can see a lot of different steps uh, and this one could also apply to stairs so maybe 
uh, steps number icon. Mm, this one is not <laughs> very easy to find, but we could say steps health icon maybe. There we go. Uh, this one's a pretty good one. It also has rounded edges, so maybe we'll end up using rounded edges, but I think this one is good for um, steps, so I'm just going to save it as well, right, and name it as steps. Uh, maybe we could also do cycling. And as you can see here, a lot of cycling ones. So we would look back at the icons that we've created and go to my desktop. And I'm going to notice what they have in common and try to find it here. So they're not very black. They're not very filled. So I'm going to try to find something that is simplistic because they're both very simplistic. And I'm going to try choosing something here that would help me with the simplicity. But at the same time, we don't want it to be too abstract. Um, maybe I'll just use the bicycle. Don't worry about the watermark or any of that cycling. We will uh, get to that very soon. And now we have three icons that we're going to be using as references. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to open XD and I'm going to uh, I'm going to just approach any kind of artboard for now to show you guys. But you guys can go ahead and choose whichever artboard that you guys want to design for. It could be a website or a phone application. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this for icons, maybe icon designs. Oh, sorry, I misspelled it, designs. And um, from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dedicate this artboard specifically only for icon design. So I can create more later, and it could be uh, for different things such as the home page and so on and so forth. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to import them. And you can very easily do that by just clicking and dragging them onto the artboard. Or you could go on file and open anything that you want, or you can even import it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to resize them according to the size that I desire to design them in. And also I'm resizing them without stretching by um, pressing on uh, the edges. So don't worry, it won't uh, affect the sizing. You don't need to press on the shift button. And here's my final one. And now we start designing. First of all, I want them all to be the same size. So I'm going to go ahead and size them in a way where they all fit within each other's um, kind of frame of sizing. And as you can see here, the shoe should be around the edge of the heart so that it's the same size. Now they're of similar size. And then we have the bicycle. I'm just going to do it under the shoe so that it's easy. And as you can see, this is the most accurate sizing between each other. Sometimes we can also depend on what we see with our eyes. I'm going to make them a bit smaller because the icons are going to be used in a smaller manner. And you can see that the shoe might appear a bit larger than the other two so I'm gonna scale it down a bit and now we can see that they're all uh, almost identical in size and dimensions so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna start uh, designing it by using my reference um, I'm gonna first start with the heart because it's the easiest and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get the pen tool and we're going to start by outlining the concept that we want to do out of this. So I really don't want to curve the line. So maybe I'm going to start by doing it here. And then I'm going to start curving it because the heart is curvy. 
it's not our choice to curve it or not. And then we can very much fix this very easily. Don't worry about it being a bit off of the symbol. And then I'm just going to place this here for now. We're going to fix this also very soon. I'm going to press on escape. And now we have this, but now I want to fix a couple of things about it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just select this part and try to align it as properly as I could without messing too much with the dimensions. There we go. Initially, it might be a bit hard to manage, but eventually we will get the hang of um, using it in an effective way. There we go. And then we want to fix this part here by just dragging it and then smoothening it from this side. Let's just look into here. And there you have it. So now we have the heart shape. Uh, it might be a bit rigid because we're doing it quite quickly, but let me try to smoothen it. Then this part here. And this one as well. So now um, when I move it away, it's more fixed. This one still needs a bit of fixing. So you see the design concept of a symbol might be a bit time consuming, which is more than okay. We just need to um, accept what we, uh, the, the, the fact that it would be consuming our time for a bit. And it's because as we're using a reference, sometimes um, it could be out of our hands to really uh, have flexibility with design, especially since Adobe XD is not very much um, dedicated to designing specifically, but it is more involved with um, the UI and UX process. So sometimes it could be easier for us to just uh, directly uh, use Adobe Illustrator, for example, just so that we could um, have more flexibility with the design aspects. But sometimes we don't really have access to Adobe um, Illustrator or any kind of Adobe program. And I would love to make this um, as accessible as possible for anyone who is interested in the design aspects of it. Uh, it could mean that sometimes we wouldn't be able to um, have complete access to specific things, but that doesn't mean that we're unable to have the amount of flexibility that we desire. Now, we're just trying to work with what we have here and move the symbols in a way that is flexible for us to use and as we're trying to fix the these reference points uh, we need to make sure that we're patient enough for it because sometimes you could um, press on something that isn't ideal for you to press on and you'd find yourself um, really confused on what to do next but if you find yourself doing that, 
don't worry, don't panic. You're going to figure it out. You just need to toggle around with the tools and understand what you can do. And then you're going to uh, find yourself realizing that it isn't as bad as you think. So we're just going to go for a basic idea here. It's not too bad. This part is a bit rigid, but it's okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue on the pen that I have started sorry, by adding one more path here. And then I press on escape. And now everything is sharp. Like I told you guys, my visual language is uh, a sharp edged kind of uh, object so I'm trying not to make it round but in case you guys want to make it round feel free to do so so now we have had we have the heart part done uh, I'm gonna just fix this part a bit because it looks it looks more rigid than the other side there you go and now I'm gonna put this back here and we're going to do the heartbeats. Also very easy. What we're going to do is just follow the heartbeats. Uh, because I want it to be um, sharp edged, I'm not going to go in a very rounded way. And you're going to see what I mean. I'm just going to press on the edges. And as you can see, it sharpens as you go further, which is really cool. And here is the last line. I'm going to press on escape, ESC. And here we have our first icon. Now, yes, it still doesn't look as polished and it is more than okay. Uh, this is being designed right now for the sake of showing you how to use these tools in order to create icons. But if you want it to be more polished and 100% clean and neat, uh, you do need to take more time uh, on working on it. And I'm going to thicken the stroke here to maybe four. No, this is too much. <laughs> maybe two. And here we have a more accurate representation of what I'm trying to do. And obviously, I'm just going to very quickly uh, fix parts like this. Just by getting the pen tool. And moving it to the edge. Now it is sharp edged. And this is it for our first icon. Now we want to match this icon to this one over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep it sharp edged. Now obviously if you want something to be round edged, what you would do is kind of circle around it. And then you have a rounded edge. But because I want to follow this kind of visual language, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it as sharp as possible. So I will just be doing normal lines. So here's my first line. Here's my second line. Here is my third line. Here is where we will actually need to curve. And this doesn't have to do with the edge. It's just the shape of the shoe. So I'm just going to go ahead and curve it over here. And then I'm just trying to straighten it, but we can fix that in a second. And then just going to go up here and finally close it up from here. Now we have this kind of um, round situation. So what I would do is I would select this and backspace. And same thing for this side. I will select this part and backspace, and it is completely straight. Uh, I'm going to see if there is any roundness here. Not really. There we go. And as we can see, it is completely sharp. So what we're going to do now is we're going to be adding the shoe uh, laces kind of area and as we can see here um, in the heart symbol 
we decided to make the heart beats and the heart edges not touch. So we will have to do the same language here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add the two lines, but I will not make them overlap with anything else. So I'm going to give them space. Oh, this one's not. Okay. So now we have this icon ready over here. Let me just try to move it. I'm going to move steps. And as we can see, it's a bit confusing, but we can work with it. First of all, we want to make the size of the stroke um, more bold. And here, because they're straight, they might be confusing for the user because they don't look very aesthetically um, correct. So what we can do instead is maybe um, tilt them a little. Maybe we can play around with where they are. They could be shoe patterns, for example, instead of the shoelaces. So what we would do is add them over here. Just like this. Select and make it a bit smaller. This is not working very much. Maybe instead we can have them as an effect of someone who is walking. It could be the step counter, but I still think that they shouldn't go too far from here. It could be that the problem is in the distance between these two, so I will play around with that and see how this will look like now. It's definitely more um, improved and we'll stop here because it's not um, really a serious draft yet. But now what I want to consider is the spacing. So here we have too much spacing, but here we have less spacing. So what I'm going to do is either increase the spacing here or decrease it here. And I think it would be better if we decrease it here because I don't think it would be successful to increase it um, with the shoes. So I'm going to very quickly just drag them closer just to um, ensure that the spacing is consistent. Consistency is very important, guys. But let's say, for example, here it's not uh, very close. We can fix it by making it closer. Uh, it could work. But personally, I think there are exceptions sometimes. And I think this might be a good exception. Another thing or another technique that you can use in order to uh, kind of avoid having uh, different spacings is that you can complete it. You can draw it as a complete heart. Let me just uh, move this very quickly. And this technique that I'm about to show you guys is the technique that I use the most. Uh, and I think it's the most effective, honestly. But let me just try to figure this out because it doesn't look very clean. Um, we can figure it out later on because I don't want to spend too much time concentrated on this. But um, we would bring this to the front and then we would add a um, sort of stroke to it. Now this is already a stroke so it's going to be difficult to do that. But um, what you would do is, let me try the other example. So we could get this one here and we could fill it up. And because this is a stroke, what we would do is we would command C, command V, and then make a slightly smaller version of it. But this time it's going to be with a white border. And obviously I'm going to send it to the back. And I'm going to also send these two to the back. So as you can see, the white borders of the original brown ones are acting as a separator. And this would help you with uh, kind of uh, choosing how far you want it to go 
um, beyond the object. I'm just going to go ahead and undo everything that I did here, just so we don't lose any progress. But you see what I mean? And now we're going to move on to creating a bicycle. Now this one is not very line based. These two were line based and we could do them using the lines or the pen tool. Uh, preferably the pen tool because we have some uh, roundness in the edges, not the edges, but within the shapes. But here we are able to use shapes such as circles. So it is very difficult with the pen tool to create a perfect circle. You have to be accurate and go through with it and sometimes it could be um, rigid, maybe not very accurate. It's very difficult. So what you what you would do is you would get the circle shape and I'm going to press on shift and start creating my circle. I'm estimating the size currently. I don't want it to have a fill so I can see um, what's going on around the shape. And just really play around with the sizing until you're very satisfied. I'm gonna so now we're noticing that the bicycle here is not a perfect circle uh, in the in the PNG that we chose, which is completely fine. We can just uh, keep moving it a little until we're satisfied. Maybe this is the best we can get to. And then I'm going to go ahead and press an option on my keyboard. And while doing that, I'm going to click and drag. And here I have my second wheel. And I will remove the clicking on the mouse. And then I will remove my hand from the option key. Now we have two beautiful wheels. And we want to create the rest. Now, like I told you guys, nothing in my visual language that I chose really touches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create everything um, without them touching the wheels or any um, object really. And I'm going to do it very quickly. Escape and then pen tool again. Here's the seat. Escape. P. Escape. P. Escape and one last time I'm going to use the P and escape. Now we have a very general outline of the bicycle. Let me try to select it. Now um, this is where we get innovative, right? We went from this to this, uh, which really aligns with the other two icons that we have created, which is great. Um, so I'm going to take this down a bit and I'm going to get rid of this since we're done with it. But as you guys can see, maybe we can remove this and instead I'm going to press on option and drag again and just place this thing here, maybe, so that things could be aligned very well. Maybe even I will take this up to indicate that these are the handles and not the seat. And we have created our own visual language by using small elements. Now, uh, we can tell that these two kind of line up, but this one is a bit too far from them. And it's because we use a lot of lines here compared to these two. But when you use a collective number of icons, uh, you will notice a pattern between all of them and they will fit right into each other's categories. And in this way, we are able to create very simple icons. We can get from an, a complete bicycle picture to our own twist according to what we want to do um, compared to our uh, designs added up together. This is very important for us to understand and uh, kind of grasp because uh, the creation of these things are the most crucial parts of designing your own uh, interface. You need to choose how you want your um, object or um, company to be viewed and uh, this 
I think is very important um, to show that you know what you're doing. And at this point, I'm just trying to maybe find a slight solution for, um, for the bicycle's visual language. Maybe uh, playing around with these details would help. But at the end of the day, this is um, my version of how I think it would be successful. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't um, stop your that you should stop yourself at this point. Maybe instead of me, you want to do something that's filled in, and then uh, from there you can uh, kind of add up. So I'm gonna go ahead and maybe try a filled in version very quickly, just to show you guys how it might look like. I'm gonna... So when creating a heart, you would want to have two kind of balls next to each other and then maybe we could do a triangle for the edge. See? And then I'm just gonna give it a spin and resize it in a way where it could um, cover the heart's edges and slowly we can build up on this. Obviously um, these will also take time just because you would choose something to be uh, colored or filled in doesn't mean that it, it is gonna necessarily be uh, more flexible but you do have uh, several options with filled in, definitely. I'm going to go ahead and also fill this part in just to make sure that everything is filled. Uh, the colors are a bit off, so let's just give them all the color black for now because we don't want to get too complicated with colors just yet. And... As you can see here, all what I'm doing is double clicking on the shape so that I can access the uh, vectors for it just to make sure that I'm doing it well. What I can also do is kind of expand it. Maybe that will make it, make it look like a more realistic heart, I would say. And just go with what feels the best. Or the most uh, appropriate. I'm gonna make it a flexible circle here and I'm gonna stretch them. And here we have a heart. I mean it's not very um, it's not very uh, mirrored but we can do that uh, we can fix that by maybe just placing a line here and making sure that everything is um, in the same Aside, so as you can see here, everything is a bit, uh, it's, it's going towards the left side, so I would just click and drag, and now it is much more symmetrical and centered. Maybe I will take this a bit lower here. And here I have a heart, right? So maybe some of you would prefer doing this, and then maybe, um, I'm just gonna copy and paste this. I'm gonna press on option and drag. And then bring it to the, oh sorry so pressing an option clicking and dragging and then I'm gonna bring it to the front change the border color to white and as you can see here it has become uh, kind of like inverted like I have something colored in and then the white here uh, is kind of um, taking it out of the icon and I think this actually looks really nice. So what we would do first is we would grab all of these here and we would turn them into one shape by pressing on this option here and now it's one shape. I forgot to press on the middle one so I'm gonna also select it and do the same. And then what we would do is we would select the heartbeats one here and we would select on this Oh, sorry. This. Wait. Oh. 
because there are uh, several different shapes, it's very hard to uh, really um, remove the white part. So what we would do is we would simply select it, right click and group. And now we have the heart group. And this is a very important thing that I'm going to be discussing with you very quickly in a second. But now that uh, we have the heart group, first of all, we have the icon designs frame here. Uh, we can press on the heart group and through the heart group we can open the folder we have the path which is the line and then the union the thing that we did here in order to create one shape and under the union we have union one which was uh, the two circles and the triangle as well as the small square that i did here uh, for more neatness if you would prefer uh, beats and then heart and then we could go into the subgroup and name this uh, just extra square. And then under this one, it would be um, heart shapes. So this would be the triangle. And these two would be circles. So this is circle R for right, and then circle L for left. And as we're going through with the design, we're able to know what we want to edit very quickly. Um, and like I was going to say, it's very important as soon as we create an icon to group it, because Currently, because I didn't group this, I could just click and drag and I completely forgot that I didn't group it. And now everything is dislocated. In order for us to avoid having to select it all and move it, uh, we should, we really should focus on grouping it. And that happens by selecting everything. Uh, if you can't do it by mouse because you have maybe backgrounds interfering and stuff, what you can do is manually select or you can select it through the list here. And from there, I'm making sure that I selected everything. I just pressed on the first object that I made and pressed on shift on my keyboard and pressed on the last object that I made on the screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and group. Or as you can see here, it could be command G or control G for PC users. And now I have the bicycle group. I can name it as bicycle. And then I would open it here and maybe name the subparts if I want to. If not, if you think it's not very necessary, you can skip it. But I think it's very important for neatness. So this would be um, kind of the center line. If we don't know names, we can just improvise. Uh, wheel line L for left. And then wheel line R for right. You can see what you're selecting when this box here goes through it. So maybe this one is upper center. And then this is seat. Um, maybe uh, make a seat support. And then we have the seat itself. And then we have pedal, and then this is wheel R for right, and this is wheel L for left. Now it is much more clear to you when you want to look through your groups and you want to select one specific thing. I want to select the seat. There it is. Easy. Um, Obviously, we can keep going with uh, more icons and creating the way that we want. Um, I'm going to very quickly just copy this and show you the filled in version, how it would look like. Let's go for black again. And then um, I could very easily just also copy these. I command C, command V this time. And I could just make this white and there you go these are um, very easy visual languages 
So if you don't want to explore too much yet and you want to focus on the design aspect, as in um, uh, developing your design uh, skills when it comes to designing the icons, I very much advise you to start with uh, colored and icons because it's very easy to manage and it isn't very um, hard to build a visual language on. But make sure that you still apply it to your edges. So these ones are still sharp edged. Uh, if I want to do round edged ones, I can very easily do so. Um, and you can go ahead and uh, explore however much uh, you want to explore when it comes to the creation of such icons and if you are already uh, exploring as I'm explaining it feel free to share it with us and show us what you are doing so far in order for us to see how much we are going to be improving throughout the course. If you would like you can start now by creating an icon and then later on uh, you can create another one and see how much you've developed uh, through this design chapter. Now, this has been one of the main and most crucial parts of the design chapter, and it might have been or felt a bit more um, intense or longer compared to other um, kind of chapters or videos, but it's very crucial for us to understand uh, how we approach the design of symbols and icons especially because it's very uh, crucial for us to be able to show our identity very easily and very directly. And I hope that this has been a very insightful part of design. And now we're going to move on to even more detailed and more exciting elements when designing your special UI um, platform.